Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Welcome to part two of my three-part series on radio knowledge for drone pilots in Canada. In the first episode, we learned some basic radio theory. In this video, we'll talk about three reasons you may need to use a radio and how to go about it. Let's get into it. You need a Rock A certificate to transmit on aviation frequencies. So if the airband is such a special club, why would drone operators need to know about radio communications? Well, there are three main reasons. One, so you can understand aircraft communications in the vicinity of your flight. Two, in the event of an emergency, such as a flyaway, to announce to the world the drone's flight path. And three, to broadcast your flight intentions in some very specific circumstances that I'll get into. Let's go through each of these. First, listening for aircraft radio communications in your flight area. Keep in mind that for a drone operator, your best defense against encountering manned aircraft is visually watching for aircraft and actively listening for aircraft. But that said, listening on an airband radio is also considered a best practice and perhaps having a crew member assigned to this task is appropriate rather than potentially distracting the pilot, trying to fly the drone, listen for aircraft, and listen on the radio at the same time. Depending upon where you're flying, you can tune in to the airport's mandatory frequency, or MF, or aerodrome traffic frequency, ATF, or just set your radio to scan the airband for active transmissions. Airport frequencies can be found in the CFS under the COM section of each aerodrome entry. The same information, by the way, can be found using Drone Pilot Canada by tapping on an aerodrome, then tapping on the message to access the airport information in SkyVector. In SkyVector, radio communications are in the airport communications section. And if you're not near an airport, monitoring the uncontrolled airspace frequency of 126.7 would be a good choice. Note that not all manned aircraft, particularly those operating in uncontrolled airspace, are even required to have a radio. Canada 2283, contact departure, 128 decimate airborne, wind 1409, so take off runway 24 right. Sir, take off 24 right, Air Canada 2283. Now, hearing something on the aviation band is not necessarily a reason to panic and immediately land your drone. But it is certainly a time to carefully listen to the communications to determine if your flight might be putting manned aircraft at risk. We'll talk about what to listen for in the next video. And by the way, just to listen on the airband does not require a Rock A certificate. And a scanning radio receiver is relatively inexpensive compared to a transceiver, which has a transmitter. The second reason for a drone pilot to use an airband radio is in the event of an emergency affecting aviation. Typically, if your drone is out of control or in a flyaway condition such that manned aviation is at risk, or heaven forbid, if you've actually collided with a manned aircraft. Depending upon the situation, you may be justified in such a scenario to initiate a blind radio call alerting aircraft and airports in the vicinity of your operation using the MF or ATF, or worst case, using the aviation emergency frequency of 1 to 1.5 megahertz. But use that only as a last resort. If you believe that serious or imminent danger requires immediate assistance, then your call would be considered a distress call, which is the highest priority of all radio messages. The spoken word for a distress call is Mayday, stated three times. This is highly unlikely for a drone operation. If your situation is serious, but not necessarily requiring immediate action or assistance, then your call is considered urgency. In an urgency call, you would state pan pan three times. Again, only initiate a radio call like this in the event of a serious threat to manned aircraft or people on the ground. Perhaps if your drone is headed straight towards a nearby airport. The third reason for a drone pilot to use an airband radio 
is to comply with the established procedure published in the AIM document regarding flying near certified aerodromes outside of controlled airspace. Obviously, this applies only to advanced pilots, since certified aerodromes are no-fly zones for basic pilots to begin with. Normally, if you're planning a flight near a certified airport outside a control zone, you simply phone the airport operator and coordinate their flight with them. If you're unable to connect with the airport operator, however, you are expected to initiate what is called a blind radio call before launching your flight. Again, we'll discuss the protocol for such a communication, the exact words to use, in the next video. To learn more about aviation voice communications in Canada, I encourage you to read the voice communications chapter in the comm section of the AIM document. It's only seven pages long and chock full of good information and details. I provide several other excellent references in the description below this video. Well, there we have it. Three reasons why you would want to use an aviation radio as a drone pilot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three, Aviation Radio Protocol for Drone Pilots.